so welcome everyone so we'll start with the first topic of the day uh, we'll start with the topic uh, the basics of pacemaker in a pacemakers of the heart the basic waves the p q r s t all the waves basic of waves and the conduction system we will start with the review it is important that you know all these three things before jumping into ecg reading so these are the basics of heart so first you should know what is the concept of automaticity so what do you mean by automaticity automaticity literally means the ability to spontaneously generate an electrical impulse in the absence of an any stimulation that is a cell by itself generates an electrical impulse in the absence of electrical stimulation that is what is called as automaticity so what are the cells that is responsible for this automaticity they are the pacemaker cells so what are the pacemaker cells of human body the most important pacemaker cell or the primary pacemaker cell is the sa nodal cells so why is this sa nodal cells the primary pacemaker or why uh, the heart impulses starts from the sa node and then conducts to everywhere else this is because sa node has a uh, ability of the spontaneous diastolic depolarization and the curve is the steepest for this sa node so sa node can have an intrinsic firing rate of around 100 beats per minute so this is the maximum amongst all the heart cells uh, so this is act as the primary pacemaker if sa node fails to generate electrical impulse due to some pathology then other cells will start to take over the pacemaker functions they are called as the secondary pacemakers so what are the secondary pacemakers we know of uh, the main most important ones are the av node or the junction or the bundle of his or the ventricular myocardium these can uh, start to generate impulse when the sa node fails to produce impulse Uh, this can not produce a heart rate of around 100 beats per minute because they don't have that much intrinsic capacity so the junctional rhythm or when the junction take over the heart rate will be around maximum of 60 beats per minute if it's a ventricular mass it should be around uh, 40 beats per minute for the ventricular muscles so such low heart rates won't be uh, they are act as an escape rhythm so they won't be very stable when the sa node fails when the other uh, pacemakers take over the rhythm which is generated will not be very stable so this is the uh, basics of pacemakers now uh, we know we have to know where is this sa node sa node is located at the junction of the superior vena cava and the right atrium okay and the apex of the uh, right atrium from this right atrium the impulse has to travel this well, this is the sa node if the electrical impulse starts from here it should travel all from here both the atrium should be depolarized and then it should travel to all the ventricles should be traveled so how does this transmission occur how does the wave of depolarization start from sa node to reach the various waves of heart so from the was the interatrial travel the interatrial travel is by a two pathways one is by the specialized conduction system uh from here uh, from the sa node to the av node here uh, there are uh, specialized conduction pathways namely thoral backman uh, uh, these specialized conduction pathways uh, will uh, help in travel from sa node to av node and also there will be muscle to muscle transmission from the uh, between the two atriums and finally uh, the normally the route from sa from the atrium to the ventricle will be only via the av node and this is the normal pathway to of depolarization so okay uh, what is the role of this av node so what does this av node do so the basic function of av node is uh, it just acts as a uh, speed breaker you know uh, this av node will slow the conduction impulses it will not stop it will not reduce the power or amplitude it will just delay the conduction from the uh, atrium to the ventricle so why does it delay so that we must know so what is the point of delaying this uh, electrical impulses this is because when the when there is a delay in conduction from a, atrium to the ventricles it gives enough time for the atrial contraction to complete so when the atrial contraction is complete for for it to be completed we need some uh, delay in uh, the conduction so for it uh, that is av nodal delay so when the atrial contraction gets completed uh, this will pump about 30% of uh, extra blood into the ventricles and this will increase the lv volume and by frank starling's law this will increase the cardiac output it act as a booster function 
so to maintain this booster function normally we have this av nodal delay so one more thing this av node will protect the ventricles why how this is because when um, a, a, take an example of atrial fibrillation in atrial fibrillation uh, the atrial heart rate will be very high the atrial rate will be in the range of 200 to 300s so if such high atrial rates won't cause much damage because the function of atrium is just to pump the blood into the ventricles imagine if the if all this 200 impulses are tra transferred to the ventricles and if the ventricular rate is 200 to 300 then none of the ventricular muscle contraction is going to be effective so the ventricular cardiac output is going to be very low and that can lead to hypotension cardiac arrest and uh, syncope all those things so ventricular fibrillation is very dangerous atrial fibrillation not so much so this AV node act as some natural protective mechanism uh, to prevent the extra impulses from a atrium to conduct into the ventricles. So two functions. One is the speed braking function so that the atrial can contract properly, put 30% extra blood into the ventricle, thereby filling the uh, ventricles more. And second is to protect the ventricular heart rate. Uh, prevents uh, any atrial fibrillation to become into ventricular fibrillation. It protects this AV node act as a protective functions. So this is the thing. So these are the three natural pathways from SA node. As I earlier said, this anterior, middle and posterior. Anterior is called as backman. The middle is called as a venky back and the posterior is called as thoral. This is the SA node and this is the AV node. From the AV node, you will, uh, it enters into the area called as bundle of his. You can see here, this is the bundle of his. From the bundle of his, it divides into two branches. The left bundle branch and the right bundle branch. The left bundle branch for the left ventricle, the right bundle branch for the right ventricle. This left bundle branch again divides into two fascicles. Two fascicles, namely the left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle. This all the left anterior fascicle, posterior fascicle and the right bundle branch finally divides into this Purkinje fibers. You can see all this black area is the Purkinje fiber. They support supply the endocardium of both the ventricles. Since the left ventricle is the dominant ventricle, it has two separate vesicles, the left anterior vesicle and left posterior vesicle. Okay, so what is the function of uh, this um, Purkinje fibers? So the Purkinje fibers are distributed throughout the endocardium. So we have to know depolarization. The depolarization of ventricles go from endocardium to epicardium. I think this is endocardium. And this is epicardium. The depolarization of the ventricles always moves from the endocardium and goes to the epicardium. And this produces the particular wave. So ventricular depolarization produces what wave? So ventricular depolarization produces the QRS wave. And uh, repolarization. Repolarization usually acts in the opposite direction. The repolarization arises from the epicardium and goes to the endocardium the epicardium and goes to the endocardium repolarization so this is the epi and this is the endo so naturally if you see you've seen the ecg i'm not i'm sure all of you have seen an ecg so this is the p wave this is the qrs wave and then you have the t wave so this uh, t wave and the qrs wave will have a similar amplitude mean similar direction why is it i have told you that they are in opposite they go in uh, endocardium to epicardium and epicardium to endocardium only because it goes in the opposite direction the t waves or uh, qrs are in the same direction to explain the matter simple this uh, t polarization and depolarization are electrically opposite events electrically opposite events so naturally, if the QRS is upright, the T wave has to be inverted. But just because the direction of depolar repolarization and depolarization are different, both of them are positive. Okay. So this is why, because they are electrically opposite, both the QRS and T wave are uh, uh, in the same direction. Uh, this, is, this is what actually occurs naturally. Now, uh, what is the uh, conduction velocity? I mean, how fast uh, the heart muscles conducts? Uh, you have to know this because we know uh, our entire depolarization if that is what is ventricular depolarization qrs will be completed within a point 0.8 i mean 80, 80 milliseconds that is only two small boxes in 80 milliseconds you will uh, have that uh, qrs normally completed with such short duration the entire ventricles in the entire ventricles will be uh, stimulated and they and the entire depolarization is completed within 80 milliseconds this is because the normal speed of conduction of the Purkinje fibers. 
they are the fastest conducting part of the entire uh, human heart and this they have a speed of up to 4 meter per second the second fastest are the other part the uh, his bundle the left and right bundle branches uh, they all conduct at a speed of up to 2 meter per second then if you consider the uh, other uh, atrial muscles other ventricular muscles and the muscle conduction is very slow at a uh, speed of 0.5 meter per second and coming to the slowest one will be the AV node. AV node is the slowest one and it conducts at a very slow speed of 0 0.05 meter per second. Okay, so this is the conduction velocity of uh, different parts. Now, uh, conduction time, uh, we know the entire uh, conduction from atrium to the ventricle, the P to the QRS, you know, this entire duration should be around 200 milliseconds. So, we have to know uh, the time taken from SA node to reach the AV node is just 30 milliseconds. It reaches the AV node in 30 milliseconds. But the, pro but the thing is, with AV nodal delay is around 130 milliseconds. And then you have the time from AV node uh, for it to reach the ventricle. It takes another 30 milliseconds. So it, in an around it takes around uh, 200 milliseconds for it to uh, reach the, from the atrium uh, from the SA node to reach the ventricle it takes around 200 milliseconds that is around 5 small box this is a normal PR interval okay so this will show the conduction velocity conduction uh, time period uh, the Purkinje fibers are the fastest conducting ones the AV node is the slowest conducting one the speed is only 0 0.05 meter per second now the conduction time is around uh, we saw that AV node has the slowest conduction time 130 milliseconds and the normal QRS duration is just 80 milliseconds and PR interval is around 200 milliseconds so you should know all this because uh, in, on the, in next uh, discussions we will know what the significance if the PR interval is short, why it happens, if the PR interval is long, what happens, all those things we will be discussing in the subsequent slides. Okay, now uh, the basic concept of polarization. So what is polarization? Normally all the uh, myocardial cells are polarized cells. By polarized means there is a definite charge difference. See the exteriors are always positive, the interior is comparatively negative the cell membrane this exterior is positive because lot of sodium and calcium they're all outside the cells and um, this is the normal polarized cells huh? and uh, the interior is always negative only few potassiums are there but the interior is majoritarily negative compared to the exterior when a wave of depolarization or when an electrical current stimulates then you will have uh, due to some changes there will be opening up of the sodium and calcium they will uh, start to come in the calcium ions and sodium ions will come in and this will start to increase the positivity inside the cell and the neg and the outside will be negative. This is what is called as a depolarized cell. Then what we call as a repolarized cell is the opposite of this process. Uh, after the depolarization, the positive ions will start moving out. The potassium will start pump getting pumping, pumped out and outside will become start to become again positive and inside will start to become negative. And then the cycle repeats. So this is what a uh, repolarization, repolarization concept is. So... We all know and uh, the, uh, there is a difference between the depolarization, the action potential, the action potential waveform and ECG waveforms are very different. Why is that? Huh? We all know the action potential waveforms, there is a resting membrane potential, you know, RMP and then uh, the resting membrane potential, then suddenly it shoots up. Uh, then when the so sodium channels open, uh, it, the, the wave of depolarization shoots up from 90 millivolts it reaches it, it, uh, 0 up to 10 or uh, it just overshoots and then uh, it starts uh, when the potassium channel opens it starts coming down and when the calcium channel opens uh, the calcium and the potassium will try to maintain equilibrium and then uh, finally when the calcium channel closes the potassium channels will only be open and there will be net deep potassium moving outwards and depolarization so this uh, this is the depolarization uh, and this is the repolarization if it uh, if we take an ecg in my ecg we all know the ventricle leave the atrium uh, the ventricular depolarization is the qrs complex and the uh, ventricular repolarization is the t wave the t wave is the repolarization i will write here t wave forms a ventricular repolarization qrs represents the ventricular depolarization and st represents the uh, isoelectric line 
so one more thing you have to know is that something you will may be able to understand the electric disturbances so this st segment this st segment is uh, as you can see here the calcium is the predominant ion so st uh, uh, segment will be affected with calcium disorders all the calcium disorders will hypercalcemia uh, can cause short qt syndrome all this high calcium disorders can affect the st segments and uh, the potassium disorders potassium disorders will start affecting the t waves you can see potassium is the predominant ion here and t wave is turning here so potassium disorders will start affect the t waves and sodium disorders hyponatremia hypernatremia hypokalemia hyperkalemia hypocalcemia hypercalcemia these are the disorders and the sodium disorders will start affecting the qrs complexes so this is this is how you have to uh, correlate between the uh, action potential and the ecg waveforms and the electrolyte disturbance so this will give a brief idea so difference between the action potential and an uh, ecg is that ECG is a surface recording. We all know ECG is a surface recording and uh, it is in the form of waves. Surface recording in the waves, P waves, QRS and T waves and it is in the form of waves and ECG, the depolarization QRS is the depolarizing wave and ST is the between the depolarization and repolarization and T wave is the uh, repolarization wave. Okay, it is more, it is a surface recording of the end, it is the surface recording of the entire cardiac activity of the heart. Heart, the entire heart's cardiac activity is measured here. Whereas an action potential is an intracellular recording. Uh, it records a single cardiac myocyte, I mean single cell. Uh, it, uh, here um, the phase, here it is, it is given in uh, the uh, sodium channel opening is the depolarization. Phase is a present in the sodium channel opening and then ST segment forms the, um, the calcium channels form the uh, plateau phase and then the repolarization phase is formed by the potassium channels so you have to know the basic difference this is a surface recording it is an intracellular recording it is in the form of waves it is this is in the form of deflections here the depolarization is the qrs here it is the sodium channel and the uh, repolarization with the t wave repolarization with the potassium channel it is recorded in the entire surface activity of the heart okay The other things, okay, we will start knowing on the waves. What is the P wave? Uh, the P wave represents the atrial depolarization. P wave is the first wave. It indicates atrial depolarization. Uh, the beginning of uh, this, that is uh, when the impulse starts firing from the SA node, it will traverse both the right atrium, left atrium and start to enter the uh, ventricles. The P wave indicates the atrial depolarization. Then this is the P wave. Then this is the PR segment. The end of the P wave, the beginning of the QRS. The PR segment indicates the AV nodal delay. PR segment is the AV nodal delay, and then uh, this PR interval. PR interval literally means the time taken from the impulse from the atrium till the time it reaches ventricle. This is an important point because a lot of us used to think this PR interval is the time taken from the impulse from reaching an SA node to the AV node. That is not the case. PR interval literally means the time taken from our impulse to travel from the ATM uh, to the bundle of his and uh, on the uh, it, to the point it reaches the ventricular myocardium. That is a PR interval. Um, okay. Then we will see if the next wave is a QRS wave. QRS wave uh, is the ventricular depolarization. The time taken for the ventricle to get depolarized, the uh, QRS is the ventricular depolarization phase and ST, ST is the time between the uh, depolarization and repolarization and this is the most important segment when it comes to MI, all the ST elevation, ST depressions, everything, this is the most vulnerable uh, this thing, uh, electrical, I mean vulnerable phase you shouldn't say, that is completely different, this is the um, site which gives much valuable regarding CAD between depolarization and the repolarization and then the t wave t wave indicates ventricular repolarization okay so we saw the p wave p wave is the atrial depolarization pr interval for the impulse to travel from the atrium to the ventricle this is the av nodal delay this is the pr segment then the qrs interval is the uh, ventricular depolarization then the st interval this uh, 
ST interval is different. ST segment uh, is isoelectric segment and ST interval indicates uh, um, ST segment plus T wave. So this T wave indicates the ventricular repolarization and uh, the TP interval is between the end of the T wave and the next beginning of the next P, uh, next P wave. Uh, this is the TP interval and uh, between two uh, consecutive R waves is the RR interval. This gives a uh, heart rate the heart rate is given by the rr interval uh, difference between the distance between the two uh, qrs complex gives roughly gives the heart rate and this uh, on the beginning of the q wave and to the end of the t wave gives uh, the qt interval uh, this qt interval is very important uh, especially if it is tachycardia or bradycardia we can we tend to the qt tends to be either elongated or uh, decreased uh, to know that we have to calculate the corrected qt interval so that is called as qtc interval we will be discussing with all of, about that in the subsequent classes so the summary for this class is that uh, the pacemaker of the heart summary is that uh, sa node is a uh, pacemaker cell SA node is the primary pacemaker cell. It is uh, responsible for automaticity. It is responsible for the impulse generation and it is responsible for uh, the propagation of impulse from uh, the uh, SA node. It starts and then it sends impulse to both the right, right atrium and the left atrium. When uh, yeah, secondary pacemakers take over, when the primary pacemakers fail, secondary pacemaker take over and AV nodes, AV node is responsible for act as a speed breaker and prevents uh, the forced ventricular heart atrial rates to travel into the ventricles. So, and we also saw about the conduction velocity, what is polarization, what is depolarization, and what is the P wave, what is QRS, what is the T wave, all the basic things we have discussed. Um, so, we will continue in the next video.